Okay, it is 6.32, time to call this special meeting to order. Everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Taylor, if you'd lead us in the open prayer. Uh, dear Lord, allow us to keep level heads this evening during our discussion. Look over everyone in the city, keep us all safe, and allow us to do the city's business. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Call the Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Mr. Booth? Here. Ms. Jones? Here. Okay, the, tonight, the purpose of tonight's meeting is for the removal proceedings of Mr. against Mr. Greg, Gregory Smith. Uh, Ken? Sure. All right. So, um, first off, I just want to thank the council for, for attending here tonight for these removal proceedings. Um, as you all are, are well aware, my firm, Reminger, and I have been selected to, to prosecute these proceedings here tonight. Um, so, we're going to put on evidence. Um, Mr. Smith and Attorney Close will then have an opportunity to put on their evidence and then we'll, we'll have it to a vote uh, as it relates to the residency requirement under the Charter. Um, as you all are probably aware by now, and if you're not, the, the Charter requires its council members to maintain continuous residency within the City of Nelsonville. Um, as Mr. Sherman here has has provided probable cause. Um, he and, and the council believe that uh, Mr. Smith has not maintained continuous residency. I'm going to object, I'm gonna object to your opening statement, council, as having presented probable cause. There's been no finding of probable cause in this case. Probable cause is not an element of the finding. And, okay. And, and I have, I also have a packet of um, exhibits I'd like to distribute amongst council. You'll get, you'll, you'll get I'm like, you'll get your chance. Like I said, both sides will be able to present their evidence on the record. Um, and as the charter says for removal proceedings, the charging official must have probable cause to provide notice for failure to maintain residency, which Mr. Sherman has provided. Um, obviously, why we are here today is because he provided that probable cause. <clears throat> so I, I first want to introduce Mr. Sherman um, as a witness here today for us, if, if we get him sworn in and on the record. Mr. Sherman, do you attest, or please raise your right hand. Do you attest that the, what you're about to say is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you have? Yes. All right, Mr. Sherman, can you state your full name for the record? Daniel L. Sherman. And what is your position? Council Vice President. How long have you served in that role? Uh, just this past year, but I was previously Council President for two years. Okay, so you, so just to be clear, have you served on the Nelsonville City Council for three years? Yes, this will be my, well, it's for about fourth year. Okay. Excuse me, Council. Uh, there, there was no pre-hearing announcement regarding there are any motions prior to pre-hearing. I have some motions I'd like to make. You'll get the your chair, opportunity. The chair, I need to make them an opening. Before before we go on the record to take testimony from witnesses in a hearing, you have an opportunity to address the court by motion. This is an administrative hearing. I'd like to have my opportunity to address the court by motion. I'm presenting my evidence. Right now, you'll have your opportunity to present your evidence in response. I believe that's how the proceedings are set forth in the charter. And I mean, yeah, but you're willing. That's that's what I was understood. Yeah, if you're, you're going to cite the charter, give me a section that says that. Uh, it's section 11.08 governs the removal proceedings. It says that a special prosecutor may be appointed, which is obviously what I've been appointed. That was done. Uh, I believe May 24th. I might not remember the date off the top of my head correctly, but I've been appointed special prosecutor to present evidence on behalf 
of the charging official in the city of uh, Nelsonville City Council to present evidence that he's not maintaining his residency requirements. And that's, well, that's that, what that's I'm a, doing that's as an issue part of my case. That's an issue that's being contested because I have a motion that uh, I wish to orally provide to the council regarding your fitness by a council's vote to serve as a prosecutor. I believe that they you have not been properly appointed, and I want to put that motion on order before you begin your case. Well, that's already been done, and we're now here for the removal. No, it hasn't. It hasn't been done. I have been that's, appointed special prosecutor. No, you have not. not. Yes, he has. No, you have not. What? Well, we're gonna we're gonna proceed with the evidence because I have been appointed special yes. prosecutor pursuant the, the, to the charter the, requirements. The, the resolution that appoints you requires two readings. I have here in front of me. Overruled. Quiet. Overruled. No, you're not going to. No, you, you are not. Overruled. You are not in charge. He has been appointed no. correctly by he is, our law he has director. Not been appointed I don't care. And I can challenge it. I don't care. You can challenge it. Denied. Overruled. Moving on. All right, Mr. Sherman, I'm going to present to you what I'll mark as Exhibit One. I apologize. I don't have a copy of this. I'll provide this to you after I give it to him to uh identify so if you can go ahead and just read that for me and, and state for the record what that document is so this was the notice that was sent to mr smith this is consideration to serve notice that you are subject to removal proceedings under the nelsonville charter okay and What's on the second page of this exhibit that's marked as exhibit one? Can you identify that for me? So this is me being the charging official. Dan Schrader is the charging official previously provided the notice to your removal proceedings from the city of Nelsonville. City Council of Nelson, City of Nelsonville. Taken on May 24, 2021 at 6 30 p.m. And is there a third page for that exhibit? Yes. Can you so identify what that page is? For immediate release, the Nelsonville City Council will hold a virtual special meeting on Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021, 6.30, for the purpose of the meeting to hold removal proceedings for Council Member Greg Smith. The public may not attend a meeting person. The meeting will be live streamed on the City Nelsonville Facebook page. The public is invited and encouraged to attend virtually. Thank you. I'm just going to approach to provide this to you so that you can have. I apologize for not making copies of this beforehand, but just so you can recognize the document. Okay. Do you, do you have a signed copy of this? I'm sure the the city has it somewhere. If you if you want to request that, we can they can probably furnish it for you. We'd like to have it right now. You can put it into evidence. I'd like to have it. Well, it's been authenticated by a witness who's identified on it, so we do not need he a signed copy of it. He hasn't identified who posted it. I didn't ask him to. All right, Mr. Sherman. So this first page of Exhibit One identifies you as something. What is that? Uh, the charging official. Okay, and what does that mean? That means that uh, I had probable cause to charge Mr. Smith with our charter violation, uh, not maintaining a continuous residency. And does that document say what section it's referring to for requirement to maintain yeah. residency? Yes, it does. It, what uh, section is that of the charter? The charging official believes you have not maintained a continuous residency in the accordance with 4.02 of the charter and are subject to the removal of the council. Okay, so that identifies you as the charging party, correct? Correct. What gave you probable cause to identify as the charging party that he's not maintaining residency? So for years, and this has been sent over to the Board of Elections, I think, once or twice. Uh, there's always been speculation and rumor that he lived in Belpre with his girlfriend. 
And then after just so much talk about it around town, I looked into it. I drove by his house several times at different times of the hour, night, because I checked my building for break-ins or whatnot in the middle of the night or early in the morning because I go to work early or even in the middle of the day and never really never saw his car in there at his so-called residency. So uh, upon further uh, people started coming forward with statements of the council members got kind of statements from people there was some searches on Google uh, with addresses and then uh, one of the ones I thought was kind of strange was being named in an obituary uh, reading of, of Beth Tyson's father and he was mentioned as you know, Beth Tyson and friend Greg so I just so you, find that odd. So you said various people came forward with statements regarding Mr. Smith's residency. Right, various people in the community uh, and for years you know people basically been afraid of retribution from him was one of those individuals who came forward a tige fisk yes did she provide a statement regarding his residency she did provide a statement and it was in, entered into evidence as it was entered into evidence last time i'm going to hand you what's marked as exhibit two I'm going to object that this evidence, this was, he's already testified to it, it was entered into evidence the last time, it's part of an entirely uh, another record, and that matter was dismissed. Um, this is a new vote. hearing, this is all new, overruled. It wasn't dismissed. Mr. Sherman, is that Miss Fisk's statement? Yes. Can you read that out loud for the record? I have lived at 530 Santa Adam Street since February 23, 2008. At that time, I have not witnessed Mr. Greg Smith at his supposed residency more than five times. I truthfully thought that his daughter lived there and occasionally he stopped by for a visit. I drove by upwards to 10 times per day. And then signed by T. Fisk, 218.21. So earlier you said that you drove by Mr. Smith's house on various occasions, right? Yes, sir. What was his address? Um, uh, his address is it's on Adam Street. There, I'm not sure. I know which house he is. I'm not sure of the actual physical address. It's on Adam Street. Yes, sir. And how did you get that address as a potential, or I guess a supposed address for well, Mr. Smith? Well, so it's. Uh, that's where he's registered to vote from, and uh, when you're on council, you have to disclose your living where you live to be a, an elector. So again, you got other statements from individuals regarding Mr. Smith's residency, right? Yes, there was also some statements from Beth Tyson's children. Who is Beth Tyson? Uh, so Beth Tyson is alleged or supposedly his girlfriend, which he lives with. From what statements I have read and seen, that that's who he lives with. He used to live in Belpre, then they purchased a home in Waterford. So you got statements from her son. Her son. I'm going to present to you what I have marked as Exhibit Three. Can you identify what that is? Yes, that is a statement from the son and his wife. Uh, relationship to Greg Smith, stepson-in-law, Beth Tyson, lived in Lowell, 2008-2009. Beth left Nathan's dad. Uh, Greg moved in. Greg meddled in Nathan and Brittany's marriage. 608 Elm Street, Belfry, 2010-2017, after Nathan's grandpa died. Uh, Greg took out a loan on a residency to buy out Dana, Kathy, and Jenny. I would imagine those are the heirs to Beth's siblings. 
Uh, Nathan's grandpa's house is in Waterford. Live in Waterford. Uh, still owns house in Belpre, 1690 Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio. Nathan lived with Greg, 2005-2006, uh, while going to Hawking College. Uh, so, what does that statement tell to you? Objection. So, the statement speaks for itself. That it does. That Greg lived with Beth Tyson. So when you saw this statement, you believed that that's further evidence of what? Yes. Of what? That Greg is, does not maintain a continuous residence. Now, you also mentioned that you did some Google searches of Mr. Smith's potential residences. Correct? Correct. I'm going to hand to you what I have marked as... Exhibit four. Do you recognize that exhibit four? I do. Can you describe what it is for me? So this is a white pages search. Uh, 608 Elm Street, Belfry, single family residence. Uh, three addresses. Three address has three current residents. Gregory A. Smith, age 60, 60s. Charlotte Matheson, age 40s. And Beth Tyson, in the 60s. What is on the second page of that exhibit for? Second page, uh, white page again. Greg Smith, Gregory Smith, in parentheses. 60s, Belfry, Ohio. Uh, so it shows cell phone numbers. What is your understanding of white pages? Well, that's a public listing. Of what? Of people's residence and numbers. And what addresses are included in that search within that exhibit? Uh, so on the final page or the second page? Any page. All right, so the final page, it lists uh, cell phone numbers. Uh, primary, and then it lists current residents, 608 Elm Street, Belfry, Ohio, and then it lists uh, uh, Adam Street from there. But it's check is current is Belfry. How long have you lived in the city of Nelsonville? I've lived here about five years. This might be a stupid question, but is Belfry within the city of Nelsonville? Mm -hmm. About how far away is Belfry from Nelsonville? Belfry is 45. In between Coolville Objection. and Parker. Objection. Can you put about a mile I need a, rule, I need a ruling on my objection. What's your objection about? You, you answered a question for I it. I said four. You said 45. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure of the mileage. I do know it's over an hour's drive. Because I used to, when I first got into Ohio, started working for the company I used to work for, uh, I had an RV, and as I was doing my first job, I, I, I uh, the only place I could do find RV place that was open in the winter was in Coolville, and I used to go to Parker for, for my groceries at Kroger's, uh, and then after that, I moved to Nelsonville, but I can tell you that I know Coolville, it took me at least... 35, 40 minutes to get to Coolville from Nelsonville. And I know Belpre is between Parkersburg and Coolville. Now, going back to, to your previous testimony, you also mentioned that you read an obituary that referenced Mr. Smith. Correct? Yes. Yes. Objection. That was not his testimony. He testified that it mentioned the name Greg. I'm handing you what is marked as exhibit number five. I need a ruling on my objection. Sustained. And I'm also handing you guys a copy of exhibit number five. Can you identify that exhibit number five for me? Yes, I can. This is the uh, obituary of Carl Harold Tyson. Uh, it lists siblings, it lists grandchildren, it lists. Uh, 
husbands, wives, children. And then when it gets to Beth, Beth Tyson and friend Greg, Belfry, Ohio. So I thought that that was odd because listing somebody's friend as a, somebody that's been in relationship just further strengthens all the other evidence that was handed before. Can you also look at Exhibit 4 for me? Mm -hmm. On that first page of Exhibit 4, it has a residence portion on that page, correct? Correct. This address has three current residents. What address is listed on that document? 608 Elm Street, Belfry, Ohio. And what are the names of those residents that are listed on that document? Gregory A. Smith, Sharla Matheson, and Beth Tyson. Beth A. Tyson. So this evidence altogether gave you probable cause that it did. to believe what? To believe that he is not a current resident of, of the city of Nelson. Or he's not a continuous resident. And based on your experience and your role as the vice president for the city council, as well as being on the city council for two years prior, that is in violation of the qualification requirements, correct? It is in violation of our charter. What does your charter provide for qualification? Well, you have to be a continuous resident. For more. Four point oh two does say uh, you have to be a qualified elector and a continuous resident of the city of Nelson. That's all the question I have for you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I want to introduce one last exhibit. Ran out of exhibit stickers, unfortunately, so I'm just going to have to draw on this. But this is exhibit six. I'll provide you a copy of this, Mr. Smith and Mr. Close. This document is an affidavit signed and notarized by a captain of the Washington County Sheriff's Office. His name is Brian Rhodes. I'll ask that Tony read this affidavit into the record for me as evidence. Now come to client, Brian Rhodes, being first duly sworn, being of legal age and having personal knowledge of the facts contained herein, hereby state as follows. Number one, I am a captain with the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Number two, I have served with the Washington County Sheriff's Office for over 20 years. Three, Scott Fitch, the city of Nelsonville Chief of Police, asked me to serve a probable cause notice to a city, to a city of Nelsonville City Council member. That city of Nelsonville City Council member was Greg Smith. Number five, Scott Fitch requested that I serve the probable cause notice at 1690 Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio. Number six, 1690 Clark Hill Road, Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio is in Waterford Township. Number seven, 1690 Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio is not located within the city of Nelsonville. Eight. I base my knowledge on the jurisdiction of 1690 Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio, based on my personal experience over the course of more than 20 years with the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Number nine. After I arrived at 1690 Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio, I knocked on the side door of the residence. A woman, whom I did not know, opened the door. Ten. After I asked, the woman stated that Gregory Smith was within the residence. Number 11, Gregory Smith then appeared at the front door. Number 12, I informed Gregory Smith that I had a letter from the city of Nelsonville to serve him, but he refused to take the paper. Number 13, Gregory Smith then closed the front door to the residence, refusing to accept the envelope. Number 14, then, I left the envelope addressed to Gregory Smith on the wood railing adjacent to the side door of the residence and left the premises. 
Further affidavits saith not. Brian Rhodes, 6-2-21, Notary Public sworn as drug before me the second day of June 2021. Looks like Pamela K. Sullivan, Public Notary, State of Ohio. City Council, I'll put to you that the evidence that we have in the form of the testimony of Mr. Sherman and also the affidavit of Mr. Rhodes uh, conclusively proves that Mr. Smith is not maintaining continuous, maintaining continuous residency in conformity with the Nelsonville City Charter requirements. Uh, he is at the very least living part-time, more than likely full-time, either in Belfry, Ohio, or at the Waterford Township, uh, Ohio address. Um, the evidence that we presented is conclusive of this fact, and we ask that you vote in the affirmative to remove him from city council because he has failed to maintain continuous residence. You turn. Yeah. Mr. Close. Yes. May I approach the members of the council to give them my exhibits? Absolutely. For Ms. Grant, is she attending it by? No, she's not. Not put in there now. She is absent. Okay, good. <laughs> talk about the uh, exhibit one uh, of the I will call it council's exhibit one or charge charging parties exhibit one which do you prefer whatever whatever you prefer okay we'll talk about charging parties exhibit one um, one I think he took it back. Okay. So we can go back to property. Okay. No, we'll use my exhibit one then. Uh, correction, my exhibit three. Charged parties exhibit three. And exhibit number three an undated document signed by Tony Dunphy and Dan Sherman as charging official bears the letterhead of the city of Nelsonville. Do you see that? Mr. Sherman, do you see that? Oh, I see it, yeah. Okay. Now, in that document, it says, because a char charging official believes you have not maintained continuous residency in accordance with 402. You are subject to immediate removal from council. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes, sir? Yes. Okay. Now, according to the provisions of 402, any qualified elector who has been continuously a resident and a qualified elector of the city one year prior to the next one, who is not the occupant shall be eligible to serve as a member of city council. Have I read that correctly? What section is that? 4.02. It's in the letter, first paragraph, 4.02. Mm -hmm.
each of these counts, which shall continue to be a president. That's correct, as it says. And that's the charge which has been brought, the sole charge which has been brought against Mr. Greg Smith, correct? That, that he is not a continuous resident? You are not alleging that he is not a qualified elector, are you? Well, if he's not a continuous resident, uh, that could be a qualified elector. I get to ask the questions. You are not alleging he's not a qualified elector, are you? I'm alleging that he is not a continuous resident, which violates our charter. If you take a look at charging party, correction, charged parties, exhibit number one, I'm going to ask you if you've seen that document before. Your exhibit one? Yes. This looks like the minutes of the meeting. Have you seen that document before? Uh, don't recall looking at the minutes. Okay, if you turn to exhibit two, there is an email mm -hmm. from council clerk bearing the names of city council members right. as well as that of Mr. Hunter and Mr. Scott Frank. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Do you see your name there? I do. Okay. Did you receive that? I did receive it. Okay. And did I scan through it? I probably skimmed over it very briefly. Okay. Now, if you looked, if you look at um, this particular document, exhibit number one, the next to the last paragraph it says roll call. All council members voted yay. This document was sent to you on May 22nd, and yet the document purports to say that the vote has already occurred. Is that correct? Been a mistype in the date. This was at council meeting. This is with regard. I would challenge that that isn't true because this isn't the resolution that we presented that evening. Okay, um, well, well, you're not a witness. Okay. You're not a witness yet. You haven't been called yet, and you have a prosecutor. Let him make the objections. Okay. Do you understand my last question, Mr. Sherman? Would you please repeat it? Yes. Did you introduce or vote on Resolution 2243 at some time on or about May 24th, 2021? I'm going to object to the line of questioning because it exceeds the bounds of the special meeting that we're here for today. Pursuant to the charter requirements, special meetings are limited to the sole subject matter that is listed in the notice. The notice is listed in the subject matter for tonight is determining the, the residency of Mr. Smith. This line of questioning has no bearing on Mr. Smith's residency. It's an email that's dated May 22nd, relates to a special meeting that has nothing to do with Mr. Smith's residency. The appointment of a sustained. The appointment sustained. Of, he would like to sustained. make no. argument. Sustained. He would like to make you his be argument. Quiet. For, quiet. I have a right. To address, I have addressed I have a it. right to address the witness. Now, you sustained the objection. I did. Don't interrupt me again. When I I'm will interrupt the you. Witness. I'm running this hearing. You're not. When you I need am, to stop. When I am, when Your I'm, attitude is out of line, counselor, and we will not put up with it. When I'm addressing the witness, 
and asking your questions. attitude is out of line. So now you can speak. You can speak to the witness. I'm going to request a five minute recess. Right. Can you give us a five-minute recess? Um, yeah, I don't know if we can. We're allowed to do that. We'll so we can confer with our counsels? Uh, no. 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 Let's just keep a roll. No. Uh, there might have been a zoom. No. Mr. Chairman, returning to the exhibits that we have here, mm -hmm. the you've testified as to probable cause, and you've you've had some exhibits that you've listed here, and the prosecutor has questioned you about those exhibits. I'm challenging the jurisdiction of the prosecutor to prosecute this action. I'm going to object and, to the challenge and preserve it for the record. When I was appointed special prosecutor, Mr. Smith objected to my appointment, but it had nothing to do with jurisdiction. It had to do with confinements within the rules of the charter, which we confined with pursuant to section 11.08. And I'll preserve that objection for the record to the line of questioning that's going to outgrow from this. 11.08 has to do with the appointment of a prosecutor. And therefore, I am allowed, since that issue has been raised, I am allowed to make inquiry regarding the legitimacy of, the, of that prosecution. Now, I'm going to ask Mr. Sherman, do you recall voting on Resolution 2243 on or about May 24th? May 24th, I did vote, yes. Okay, and on May 24th, 2243, was the resolution adopted on the first reading? Again, I'm going to continue the objection. The special meeting is here for a particular purpose to Same. hear evidence that is probative to the question of residency. So the Same. question of the procedure for appointment of a prosecutor has no probative value on the determination of where Mr. Smith's residency is. It has probative value with regard to the fact that Sustained. whether or not this tribunal Same. has jurisdiction move, to have this move. hearing to begin with. Well, let's move and on I'm, with allowed the to make, I'm allowed to make that record. You can make the record, but the objection is sustained. Let's move on with the question. The documents that you've spoken to here, um, with the exception of the affidavit exhibit number six, have these documents been in your possession or possession of the council since uh, May 12, 2021? Mm, so so they, they trickled in and not all of them were in until up to the morning of the special meeting. 
So is it your testimony that exhibit number three was provided when? I can't recall that date. When was exhibit number four provided? Uh, I can't remember. I don't recall those dates when I received them. When was exhibit number five provided? I don't recall the dates when you received Weren't these all exhibits that were part of a prior decision rendered by city council regarding the residency? There was no prior decision. Evidence counts. Some of the council members is the first time they saw it. So there was no prior decision made. Are you telling me, and keeping in mind, of course, that you participated in these proceedings, are you telling me that on February 19th, 2021, exhibits, February 19th, 2021, exhibits three, four, and five, or not part of the record of a hearing brought for charges under 402 and 1108 against Mr. Smith. Uh, did you ask a question about the previous hearings? And you said it was irrelevant. Is there a new hearing? Sir, I'm asking the question. Well, answer I'm going to answer your question, and I don't recall dates. Sorry. Do you recall seeing these documents at the prior hearing? regarding the removal of Gregory Smith that was held in February of this year. Of course, I saw them because I was a charging official, so I saw them up to that morning. So these are the same documents that is Exhibit 3, 4, and 5. Same evidence. Was that correct? The prosecutor leaned over and whispered in Dan's ear. Well, leaning over whispering in Dan's ear. Right. Order. Yeah. Order. I'm speaking to my friend. I think it's improper. Or, I was, I'll, I'll be open with, I was clarifying with him that your line of questioning was relating to the first removal proceeding in February. I was just making that clear to him in case he wasn't understanding the line of questioning. I understand, Counselor, and from what I gather from your resume and that page, I confirm that you are fairly learned in these matters. So I, I would appreciate if you would conduct yourself accordingly. Do it. Thank you. Exhibit number two, uh, when when did you obtain this document from Tish Fisk? I did not receive that up until probably a day or two before the hearing. Which hearing? Which one are you asking about? You said the day or two before the hearing. Which hearing are you referring to? Where we presented evidence. Are referring to the February hearing? Counselor, you can't trick me up with dates. I'm not trying to trick you up with dates. I'm, I'm just simply asking you, exhibit number two, you testified that this is your probable cause for this hearing. And I'm right. asking you, uh, when did, did I receive it? When did you receive it? Yes. I'm not sure when I received it. I can't, I can't recall that, those dates. Okay. So. Do you, you remember what, what, which hearing? So was it a Friday the 19th that we had the hearing? Yeah. On February 19th, 2021, did you receive this document prior to that date? So I either received it in the morning of or in the afternoon of the 18th. Okay. One of the two. I'm not sure which one. Did you have any conversations with Ms. Tiege Fisk uh, prior to obtaining this document? I did not. Have you had any conversations with Ms. Teach Fisk after obtaining this document? I did not. Was Ms. Teach Fisk under oath when she gave you this document? I am not sure. Did, did you observe her write the document or was it presented to you? It was presented to me. Who do you who took this document? Do you know? Uh, I can't remember. Do you know if Ms. Teach Fisk signed it? I would hope that that would be truthful. Do you know if she signed it? Did I witness her sign it? No, okay. I did not. Okay. And why is this on the city of Nelsonville Division of Police form? Uh, because that was probably a statement form. Because we don't really have this happen a whole lot. Do you know whether or not police officers uh, talked to Ms. Teach Fisk in order to get her to give this statement? 
Objection. Sustained. I do it. Who gave you this statement? I believe it was another council member. Okay, which council member gave you the statement? Councilor, that's back in February. I got a lot of things on my plate. Okay. Did uh, having any conversations with Ms. Fisk uh, regarding whether or not she made any inquiry of Mr. Smith as to what his residence was? Councilor, I do not know. Have you had any conversations with Ms. I have not had no conversations with Ms. Fisk. So the only the only evidence you have arising out of the information provided on Exhibit 2 from Ms. Fisk is, is Exhibit number 2. You have no other information from Ms. Fisk, correct? I have no information from Ms. Fisk other than her statement that was given to me. So you don't know whether or not she may have stopped by uh, Mr. Uh, Smith's residence when he wasn't there and was out grocery shopping, do you? Objection. Sustained. I can't speak for this guest. Do you know why he wasn't there? Uh, I, I can only state what I've witnessed myself. Okay. What did you witness yourself regarding Mr. Smith? At I've, been by his, I've been by his place. Like I said, I want to check my building in the middle of the night for because it was burglarized once, so I keep keep a close eye on my building. Uh, I drive around the city, I see no signs of Mr. Smith. Okay, did you go up and knock on his door? No, I did not. Okay, did you call him on the phone? Did not. Did you send him an email? Did, did he get rid of his car? Did you did you send him an email? <laughs> did not. Okay. Did you ever uh, ask anybody else whether or not uh, they knew where Mr. Smith's car was? Counselor, are you trying to say that every time I went by his house that his car wasn't there, that he was there? I'm asking the question, sir. I, I appreciate your your, well, I your just, inquiry I into these the matters. Man. I have not emailed him. I did not call him on the phone. I did not ask him where his car was. So every time that you drove by his house, when you didn't see his car there, you presumed that he was not inside the residence. I presume that because how else? Where's his car? Do you know where anybody, if anybody else drives his car? I don't know. Does he have a daughter? He does have a daughter. Does his daughter drive his car on occasion? I have no idea. Could his daughter drive his car on occasion? The occasions that you didn't see the car there? I have no idea. Were you aware that Miss Keys Fisk requested a variance on an ordinance for a spot zoning in 2018? Objection to the line of questioning. This is not prohibitive to the question of residence for Mr. Smith. Sustained. It's probative as to the truth of the matter asserted in this unsworn document as to the character of the witness and whether or not the witness could be biased. Since no one has responded to my request for any documents in advance of this, for which I have twice addressed council, all members of council in the record, and asked for subpoenas to be issued, both for witnesses and for documents, and you have produced none, I'm asking for the latitude to at least inquire whether or not this witness has any knowledge that there may be bias against Mr. Smith by Ms. Fisk. I was not on council when that came up, so I couldn't tell you. Were you were you aware or were you made aware by anyone nope. that there was a spot zoning variance in 2018 and Ms. Tisk was denied um, that by Mr. Smith's vote? Uh, no. Would you turn to exhibit number 14 of the charged parties packet? I 
Have you seen this document before? I'm still looking for your exhibit 14. Let me know when you get there. Have you got there? I'm here. Okay. When um, have you seen this document prior to today? I don't know, I'm reading it. So, which point? Can you explain what this document is? So, there was a question on my uh, elector. I lived in the city over a year and then registered to vote within all shortly thereafter. So, but the Board of Elections states. A qualified elector is 30 days before a hearing. But as far as a continuous resident, I've always been a continuous resident, and I was then before, the year before. I'm asking you what, what this document means to you. What does it mean to you when you read it? Sounds to me like I was a qualified elector ruled on by our city attorney. Okay, so... Mr. Gary Hunter wrote this to all the members of council mm -hmm. at that time, correct? Correct. And you were a member of council at that time, correct? Correct. All right. And you read it at that time, correct? I did. Okay. And in this, Mr. Hunter indicates in the second paragraph, he says, I have been asked for an interpretation of Charter Section 402 to define what a qualified elector means, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that, is that a yes, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. And when you look at 402, the language of 402, if you look at your Exhibit 1, my Exhibit 3, it speaks to, in the second paragraph, Section 402, any qualified elector. Mm -hmm who has been continuously a resident and qualified elector of the city for one year prior to the next election, Correct. shall be eligible to serve as a city council, member of city council. And I've left out a couple of words there, but that's what it says, correct? Correct. Okay. And in this document, Mr. Hunter, uh, he was the uh, city law director at that time, correct? Correct. Okay. And as city law director, he's a parliamentarian that sets the interpretation of the statutes of the city charter, correct? Correct. Okay. And he says in that same paragraph two, in my opinion, this interpretation is not correct. The language does not say qualified voter, as in the case of initiative petitions under section 10.1, it says qualified elector. So he's very specific that he's talking about qualified elector here, not a qualified voter, correct? Correct. Okay. Then he recites the Ohio Constitution in Article 5. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he says, every citizen of the United States, this is under the Constitution, 
of the age of 18 years who has been a resident of the state, county, or ward such time as may be provided by law and has been registered to vote for 30 days, has the qualifications of an elector and is therefore entitled to vote in all elections. Correct? Correct. Okay. So as a qualified elector, which a decision rendered by this council on February 22nd, 2021, if you would look at Exhibit 15, in the fourth paragraph. This is the decision that was rendered when the matter came for hearing on February 19, 2021. Would you not agree? That's page one of that decision. Correct. Okay. And in that decision in paragraph four, it says the issue is not whether Greg Smith is a qualified elector of Nelsonville pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 350302. He is a qualified elector pursuant to state law. Do you see that? I do see that. And that was a decision of this council, correct? The decision of this council was that he is not a continuous resident, which states in our charter, you must maintain a continuous residence. The answer requires a yes or no, sir. I just answered you. I told you exactly what we voted on. You voted on whether or not to accept this decision, did you not? We voted on Greg Smith not being a continuous resident of this seat. That is the substance of this hearing. So you, you did, or is it your testimony that on February 22nd, 2021, you did not vote to adopt this decision, removing Greg Smith from city council? We did adopt this. And as you can plainly see, that must, and this is the important part now, mind you, that, that he must continuously be a resident. I'm asking you. Why well, I just answered you. I'm asking you the question, if you adopted this decision on February 22nd, 2021 as a decision of council. Sir, do you just that's a yes or no? You, that's a yes or no you question. Just put in the words you want? Because did it, you, it clearly states right here the issue is not whether Greg Smith is a qualified elector the pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code. He is a qualified elector pursuant to the law. The charter, which is why we're here, the charter and addition and qualifications in section 4.02 that he must be a continuous resident. Mr. President, this is what would, you we, direct the, would you direct the witness to please answer the question I've asked and not engage in prolonged narrative as to what he wants to say? Well, oh, I'll just read what's here. Thanks for the question. This is, this is what we have voted on right here. And what you voted on, this decision says he is a qualified elector pursuant to state law, correct? Finish the sentence. That, I that can, is, I, that I, is I, the I sentence. Can, I can say any sentence I want. Right? That is the sentence, is it not? He's not a qualified. So you may be a qualified elector to Excuse the board of election. Excuse me. Let's not be talking. Oh, you're fine. I'll be talking oh, while I'm carrying on your line, line, line. Order, 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 order. It's my now, saying. you don't tell me what to do. Uh, Mr. Close, I will say this on that, that that you keep wanting him to say. There is another sentence that you're not reading, but according to that question, Dan, please answer the question according to his question. So, in accordance to the incomplete sentence, yes, we adopted this as we voted yes on this. And back to this particular document, it says the charter adds an additional qualification in section 402 that he must continuously be a resident, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, if you, again, turn back to Exhibit 14, The qualifications of an elector 
which an individual has, according to the Ohio Constitution, are that he is a citizen or she is a citizen 18 years of age, who is a resident of the state, county, or ward, such time as may provided by law, and has been registered to vote for 30 days. Such time as may be provided by law involves a city charter, does it not? Does that make him a continuous resident? Sir, will you answer my questions, please? Answer the question. Could you repeat the question? At such time as may be provided by law, refers to the law is part of the law is a city charter, is it not? The city charter is, yes, a okay. part of our charter. Okay. So when Mr. Hunter looked at this, he was addressing the issue of a qualified elector in relation to city charter section 402, was he not? 402. Okay. Now, when you are a qualified elector, as the decision recites, then you also have the following characteristics. Otherwise, you can't be a, a, a qualified elector. And the qualified elector is a person 18 years of age. They've been a resident of the state, county, or township or ward. Such time as may be provided by law and has been registered to vote for 30 days. So by admitting that Mr. Smith is a qualified elector, you have bestowed upon him all those characteristics as a matter of law in adopting that decision. Objection. That you're, you're reversing the result of the requirements with the requirements themselves. That is not how sustained this. That's not how the Constitution works. You can go ahead and answer. I'm a little confused by the question because it sounds like he's just double talk. It's, you know, is, is, is a qualified elector a qualified, a, automatically okay. a continuous resident? I'm, I'm asking you to clarify that. No, that, that's a question that you have to answer because you're the one who has decided that there's probable cause to believe that Mr. Smith has not been con continuously been a resident. I believe he is not. Okay. So what is the definition in the charter of continuously being a resident? What's the definition of continuous resident? Objection insofar as he cannot speak for the city charter form an official opinion as the definition. He has already defined probable cause. Sustained. Justified at length as the probable cause. Sustained. You can answer that question. There is probable cause. Probable I don't, cause. I don't, I don't. I don't have a dictionary in front of me, so I can't recite you the the definition of continuous. Well, you're reciting the definitions of continuous for the purpose of removing Mr. Smith from office. So I want to know what the definition in the charter is for you to find probable cause that he has not been a continuous resident. What's the definition of continuous? The definition of continuous. Like I said, I don't have a dictionary in front of me. Was well, it not being at home for a day? Well, I find it a little odd that his... That's a yes or no question, well, sir. Is it not being home for a day? I I, I can't tell you. I, I don't have a dictionary in front of me. Okay. Is it not being home for a week? can't tell you. I don't have a dictionary in front of me. Okay. Then how can you testify there's probable cause if you can't tell me? How can you testify... I don't have a dictionary in front of me. Did you have a dictionary at the time that you wrote the notice to Mr. Smith saying that he was being charged? I couldn't. Okay, what's your definition of probable cause? There is probable cause. There's listings no. in the white pages. Objection. You can't form an opinion as to what the legal definition of probable cause is right here. Okay. I mean, it's not no, I said what is your probable cause? Sustained. We've already presented that. that was what, what is your definition? What is your definition of continuously being a resident? What yeah. is continuously? We are moving on. Objection. Sustain. Form an official this is, opinion. This is city charter. Not to go city charter. 
He has already testified, and you've asked him several questions, Counselor, regarding probable cause. That's been the root of, of his testimony. Having probable cause to violate one provision, that's being continuously a resident. I want to know from counsel, pursuant to the charging party, what the definition of continuously being a resident is. Well, when other statements come in and say that he lives somewhere else, that does not make it continuous. I'm a continuous resident here in Nelson. Well, if you if you go away for an evening and you live in a motel for that evening, is that your definition of not being a continuous resident? Are you saying that's what he's doing? That's, sir, I asked you a question. Will you answer it? Look, buddy, I'm going to tell you here. All I can tell you is I, I see in the white pages, it says current resident. In these, at six I'm not talking about answer. white pages, sir. I'm that's, talking about in your capacity. You're asking me my probable cause. Oh, there it is. I'm asking you in your questions. capacity, in your capacity as the charging party, what is your definition to charge Mr. Smith with not being a continuous resident? What is your definition of continuous? My definition of continuous is people saying that he lives elsewhere. For how long? It doesn't matter how long. So the fact you that you live somewhere else and you pay bills somewhere else. Do you have any any uh, information that he pays bills somewhere else? Let's see, 608 Allen Street, Dockery, Ohio, single family residence, number of residents, this address has three current residents, R-E-S-I-D-E-N-T-S, residents, Gregory A. Smith is one of them. Uh, cell phone numbers have been attached to, to that address. Uh, the step-son-in-law or family members of Beth Tyson saying that Greg moved in. That's pretty, pretty substantial to continuous. That's why I based my probable cause. Okay. Well, well, we'll get back to all that in a minute, but let's first, let's talk about your exhibit four since you pointed the white pages. You got one telephone number on there, correct? Uh, I thought there was a couple numbers on there. And I can't tell you what his number is now because my numbers on my contact list have been uh, mistakenly erased. I lost a lot of my contacts, but at the time, I did check a cell phone number and it was one that was listed. Okay, the document that you presented here is exhibit number four on page three, has three telephone numbers, correct? Right, and I can't tell you which one is was Greg's current number at the time because like I said, I lost my contact. Okay. The cell phone numbers are not are not published in white pages. Are well, they? I don't take it. I was gonna tell you what I see. Okay. And on the five the landlines, um are where the phone's located, correct? I couldn't tell you. Counselor, I'm not the phone company. Okay, well, you if I you're not me. the phone company and you can't tell me, what do you rely on about the white pages document as Exhibit 4 to form probable cause that Mr. Smith lives anywhere other than 238 Adams Street? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. You can answer. No, I, I thought I already did. I've, I've given you the same answer over and over. May I approach the witness? Sure. Yeah. We're going to have to add these at the bottom of the list. I think my last one was 17. I can double check on what you said. 18. So the front. Yeah, it is 
18 will be the next one. Okay. I'll show you what's been marked as exhibit 18. And since that's the only document I have, I'm going to stand a little closer here. Is this comfortable for you? Oh. I don't know about you, but. So, okay. There's a letterhead there. What's the letterhead? Three. Uh, Gregory Smith. Okay. And what's the address? 238 Adam Street. Okay. And what 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 is that a letterhead for? Cecil State Steward. For a business organization? I to be honest, I couldn't tell you what it is. Okay, what's it say at the top? Ohio Rural Letter Carriers Association. Okay. And that does that appear to you to be business stationary? Well, anybody can make that on a computer. I understand. I couldn't tell you. I don't okay. know the office. Do you, see, do you see an envelope there? I do see an envelope there. Okay. What's the address on the envelope? It says 238. Okay. And is there a card there? Yeah. And what's the card say? Same thing. Okay. And what's the phone number that's on the card? Uh, again, I couldn't tell you. I just, uh, simple, simple, 46. Okay. Is that phone number on your exhibit four? Yep, right there. Okay, and so that would be an indication that the phone number that's on there is the address that's on, located on Adams Street, according to the document number 18. Right? Again, anybody could make up a letterhead or. Okay, what's what's the source? What's the source of uh, your exhibit number four? Where did that come from? Uh, just Google search. So you Googled it yourself. I did not. Okay, who Googled it for you? I couldn't tell you. So someone else prepared this document, not you. I did not Google that myself, no. Okay, where did you come by exhibit number four? Uh, number four was sent to me with the rest of the evidence. Okay. Is there a date anywhere on exhibit number four? No. Okay. When did you get exhibit number four? I don't recall. Sometime before the hearing. Sometime before this hearing or sometime before the hearing on February 19, well, was, 2021? If it was listed in the prior evidence, then it was before that. Okay. When you print something out from the internet, isn't there usually a date and a website that appears on the documents and indicates where the document originated and what time it was printed? I couldn't tell you. I'm not a computer person. Okay, so you're not a computer person. You didn't Google this. And you've accepted it from somebody else who did Google it, correct? I did. Who Googled it? I couldn't tell you. Okay, so it's completely unknown to you, the source of this particular document. I, I do not recall where this came from. Uh, it was presented to me, and I take it at face value. And the face value is that it has a phone number on it that appears on the letterhead of, of Mr. Uh, Smith's Rural Carrier Business and Association on his envelope and on his business card at 238 Adams Street as well, correct? Again, anybody can anybody make that up. Well, anybody can make up white pages here, can't they? Well, so we'll agree to disagree on that one. Does, does Greg Smith have a middle initial? I couldn't tell you. Well, this document talks about a Gregory A. Smith. It you also know says Greg Smith. White pages, exhibit number four, Gregory A. Smith. I think and then it says Greg Smith. Mm -hmm. So which is it, Gregory A. or Greg? Well, apparently they're both listed. Okay, do we know if they're the same person? I'll find it a little. That 238 is also listed on the white pages as well as current is checked as far as 608 felt me. Is there any indication on this document what years those addresses were allegedly uh, the residence of Mr. Smith? Nope. What's your look back period 
to charge uh, a violation of Rule 402 to be a continuous resident. Uh, Mr. President, I'm going to need a five minute recess because I need to make a couple phone calls because this is going to just drag out. Have an excuse for five minutes? Granted. Thank you, Mr. President. I just had to make some arrangements. I had family coming into town. Otherwise, it's going to drag home. Okay. Mr. President, so I don't forget, may I tender this, these documents as Exhibit 18 to the clerk now? Sure. Which set of your exhibits do you want to tender to the clerk also? Well, or? yeah, that's what I was going to. Okay, you're going to tender everything? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, sure. Just want to make sure that we don't get. Because I have these still in front of Dan, I'm just going to wait until he's done with this question. So my question to you was regarding a look back period mm -hmm. for a 402 violation. What's the look back period for that? I'm sorry, what was that question? What's the look back period? You have to be a continuous resident. So 402 says you have to be a continuous resident for a year, correct? You have to maintain a continuous residence. Maintain. Well, look back period, the longest you could look back then would be to the last election, correct? You've been on council a long time. Is it is it your testimony that you can go back to a previous election? I don't need to. That just Council, Mr. Sherman is not on trial here. You have questioned him thoroughly. 
I want to move these proceedings along. I want you to present your evidence, your exhibits of evidence stating that he lives here. We're done with this I'm line in, of questioning. I'm, in, I'm done. I'm in We're trouble. done. We're moving on. This is, you have questioned him, questioned him, questioned him on everything multiple times and repeatedly. Let's move but, on with have, your evidence. I still have not talked to him about his other exhibits yet, and I'm entitled to cross-examine him on these exhibits. Since there is well, no let's move evidence. on. Let's move on with it. Let's take a look at exhibit number three. When you read exhibit number three. Withdrawn. Exhibit number three is, is also on a city of Nelsonville division of police um, format, correct? Voluntary Who's statement exhibit, form. Who's exhibit three? Yours or ours? Your exhibit three. Uh, Charging party exhibit three. Was this this is the city of Nelsonville Division of Police voluntary statement form, correct? It is. Was this taken by police officers? No, it was not. Who was it taken by? I believe it was taken by another council member. I wasn't there present for that. Okay, was this was this taken under oath? I believe there was a video attached to it with their statement saying that, that I or whatever. Their, that that was them and this was their statement. Was this statement taken under oath? Well, I believe the video would surface. You haven't presented a video here tonight, have you? The video is already, has, you have it. You haven't presented a video here tonight, have you? No, we have not. Okay. Would you like it? Okay. And this statement was not taken under oath at the time, was it? Okay. Yeah, the city council has the, the power to issue us, correct? And to take us? I, I would imagine. Okay. And do you know who took this statement? I believe it was one of the other council members. Do you know whether or not who that council member was? I wasn't there present, so I couldn't tell you. Okay. Did you witness the person sign this? I did not witness. Okay. With regard to this statement that's taken, this is supposedly the statement of two persons, Nathan and Brittany Tyson, correct? Correct. Which statement is is attributed to Nathan and which statement is attributed to Brittany? I believe it states that on the... Which part of these words are attributed to those individuals? I believe it's stated which one said which. Okay, well, identify that for me. It's right there on the state. That's already been presented. What is it? What are we trying to prove with this line of questioning? I'm just curious. Credibility of the document itself, the credibility of the witness, the assertion of the truth of the matter therein. Okay, well, you've you've already tried that. So what else? What else are we going to do? Let's. Okay. What facts in here do you have that date? Mr. Smith's residency anywhere. Well, so these are Beth Tyson's children, and they said that they lived with Greg in Belfry. And On what dates? Let's see, 2010 through 2017, after. Nathan's grandfather died. They bought the other siblings out of the father's house, which they moved to Waterford at the time. What dates do these witnesses attribute to Mr. Smith being a residence at any particular place? 
Where was he and what dates did he live there according to this statement? Oh, let's see, that's 2008 through 2009, 2010 2017, 2005, 2006. I've answered you. Okay. I mean, they're all right here in the statement. Do you have any information? No, withdrawn. When was Greg Smith last elected to Chris City Council? Oh, I'm not sure what, what that, uh, two years ago, maybe. Okay. Would it be 2020? 2019. 2019? It was 2019? 2018? 2019. 2019. Okay, so in 2019, Mr. Smith was elected to city council. Did anyone at that time challenge whether or not Mr. Smith was a qualified elector? Uh, did not. Did anybody bring any actions to the Board of Elections contesting uh, Mr. Smith's uh, qualifications to be elected? I don't believe in, 29, that, in 2019. I don't believe they did that year. How about after that? There was no election after that. So since 2019, uh, that election, no one has brought any action to the Board of Elections making uh, any allegation that Smith, Mr. Smith was not a qualified elector. Objection. Is that your recollection? He's not on the Board of Elections. Yeah. I can't speak for the board of elections. I can't tell you what they have turned in or what wasn't turned in. Were you aware of any? I was not aware of any. Okay. Were you aware of any facts or circumstances in 2019 that would permit you to have probable cause that Mr. Smith was not a continuous resident of the city of Nelsonville by the documents you've presented here today? Well, there's always been speculation, but you have not no proof. I, since did not 2019. In, I did not dig into it until our previous hearing. Okay. Take a look at exhibit number six. Your number six. Okay. okay. Do we know where this affidavit was taken? I do not. What what is that exhibit number six? Uh, the affidavit from the deputy from Rose. Okay. Do you know Pamela K. Sullivan? What what does that I have, have nothing to do with oh, the oh, affidavit? Oh. What does that have to do with anything? I'm just well, curious. She's notarized it. Yeah. Notarized it. It's it may be in Washington County. It may be in Athens County. Are you, are you questioning the notary? The... Well, I'm wondering. I'm wondering where this was was taken. How is that relevant? It, it's relevant it. because in an affidavit, you need to identify the county in which the affidavit is taken. I did not take the affidavit. I wasn't aware of the affidavit. A friend of the officer served him in Washington County and has stated that in the end of that. Do you personally know Brian Rhodes? I do not know Brian Rhodes. Do you know any council members who know Brian I, Rhodes? I do not know. Have you ever discussed the matter of Mr. Smith's residency with uh, Captain Brian Rhodes? I've never heard He's already answered that he doesn't know him. Sustained. He's already answered the question. According to this, um, Captain Rhodes has served with the Wayne County or Washington County Sheriff's Office for over 20 years, correct? You're asking me? Yes. I do not know Officer Rhodes. I this tonight is the very first time I've seen this affidavit. 
So this affidavit did not form the basis of your probable cause letter to Mr. Smith that's undated for the hearing this evening. I, I did not know anything about Mr. Brian. So tonight is the first time you've seen this affidavit from Brian. First time I've seen this affidavit, yes. Okay. So the answer to the question is it did not form the basis of your probable cause letter to Mr. I'm sure I already answered that question. Okay. Who gave this to you tonight? I received it with, when the rest of the council received it. When did the rest of the council receive it? Were you not here? Was it in this meeting? Yes. Okay. Would you agree with me that Captain Rhodes offers no facts that identify Mr. Gregory Smith as being a resident of 1690 Clark Hill Road, Waterford, Ohio, in this affidavit. Did you find that all, all coincidental? Answer the question, please, sir. I don't know Officer Rhodes. I don't know that he served down there. I do not question an officer of our law. Uh, if you would like, to make the question on the roof. You, you raised the question to me. Don't you find that off, awfully coincidental? It, it is. Okay. Don't you find it awfully coincidental that a captain with 20 years experience in the Washington County Sheriff's Office, if he had knowledge of Mr. Smith being at that residence at any particular time as a resident, knowing that this affidavit was for the purposes of determining residency, would have put that in his affidavit? Sir. Objection. You can't speak on behalf of Brian Rhodes. No, neither can Mr. Rhodes because he's not here because Sustained. nobody here is offering a subpoena to him. Sustained. His affidavit speaks for itself. And the affidavit doesn't say that Mr. Smith is a resident in Washington County, does it? Objection. The affidavit speaks for itself. Sustained. Do you recall Mr. Smith asking for a public hearing regarding this matter? I've never seen an email about that. Okay. And we are all convened here this evening pursuant to the city charter 1108, correct? We are here at the hearing. Yes. Okay. And you are following the rules for 1108 in order to proceed with this hearing, correct? With our special counsel to Handle this matter. Okay. In 1108, um, when a person who is charged demands a public hearing, there is a requirement that the notice that's provided be published a week in advance of that hearing for the person demanding the public hearing, correct? Well, it's your question to me because I did not handle that part. Well, who does? I would believe that that would be our head of our council. Okay. But as a member of council, you're familiar with the, the process, correct? I did read the charter, correct. Okay. And is it the fact that um, Mr. Smith asked for a public hearing would mean that he's entitled to that notice to be published, correct? And when was the date on that? Because I have to look back through emails for you, unless you have that.
Can I approach? Sure. We'll mark this as Exhibit 19. Have you seen Exhibit 19 before? Yeah, from the 21st of May. Okay. And what is that requesting? It's requesting uh, a public hearing. And do you read the public notices that are published regarding members or, or matters that come before council? I do not read them in detail. I just skim through. Uh, okay. Um, we are uh, we're moving on. I want exact evidence from now on of that Mr. Smith lives in Nelsonville. We have exhausted everything. In Tony, this hearing. Give us the day now, Are you speaking or is your attorney speaking? Because if you're speaking, he can leave. No, I will speak. I will speak for Mr. Smith. And, and it's not up to us to give you evidence, by the way. You're the prosecution here. The okay. prosecutors have we've to prove got, their we've case. We've got the evidence. The, the prosecutors have but to prove their case. Do you have case. any evidence proving differently? I'm, I want to take a five minute recess to converse with my client. Mr. Sherman, uh, returning for just a minute to your exhibit number. Three? Yes, exhibit number three. Mm -hmm. um, would you turn, please, to my exhibit 12? Objection. Exhibit 12 is not prohibitive uh, for the question of residency. Exhibit 11? Objection. Exhibit 11 is not prohibitive of the question of presidency. Sustained. Well, I would proffer that Exhibit 11 goes to the issue of credibility of the witness, Brittany Tyson. Well, and Exhibit point. number 12 goes to the credibility of Nathan Tyson. And that both are uh, criminal records that involve uh, crimes regarding... It has nothing to do with his residency. Well, Sustained. Exhibit three has something to do with his residency, according to Mr. Sherman. So I'm allowed to attack the bias of these witnesses, even if it's by circumstantial or uh, parole evidence. Since they're not here. Sustained. You cannot speak on behalf of exhibits 11 or 12 as it relates to these two other individuals. He has no personal knowledge of those incidents. Okay. Well. Based on Brittany Tyson's criminal history, 
I'm going to proffer exhibits 11 and 12. And since the statement is contained together, that that is evidence of falsification, or at least the evidence that can be considered uh, as um, potentially being falsification, given the circumstances under which that particular document was obtained. Um, I would, for the record, and there's no need to read it into the record, but to keep it as part of the record, exhibit number four, which is the affidavit of Melanie R. Smith regarding the residency of Greg Smith. That exhibit number five is an email from Angela Bach, the city council, dated February 15th, regarding the residency of Greg Smith. That exhibit number six is a homeowner's policy declaration in the name of Greg and Melanie Smith at 238 Adams Street, which is subject to Ohio law for truthful and accurate information on policies of insurance and subject to penalty for falsification thereof. That exhibit number seven is the 238 Adams Street County Auditor's tax records for Smith, Gregory, and Melanie R. at 238 Adams Street. That exhibit number eight is the voting registration as compiled by the Board of Elections of Athens County, indicating 238 Adams Street as being the continuous residence of Mr. Greg Smith, Gregory Smith, from November 3rd, 2020, back until May 6, 2003, continuously. That exhibit number nine is the bank account in the name of Gregory and Melanie Smith jointly, as well as Andrea N. Thompson, his daughter, at 238 Adams Street, Nelsonville, indicating that is their residence and the branch office is being Unified Bank in Nelsonville. That the gas bill for 238 Adams Street is in the customer name of Greg Smith, which is paid. I have proffered exhibits 11 and 12. As for the credibility and bias and falsification of the witnesses Tyson's. And I'm going to ask you, um, Mr. Sherman, as the charging party, do you have authority to request subpoenas on behalf of counsel? Uh, yes. Okay. Did you receive my request for subpoena one day of May 19th and the other day of May 28th? That's exhibit 13. Did you receive those? I'm looking at them. May 19th and May 28th. 
They're part of Exhibit 13. Pastor, I do not have a May 19th request for my team. The reason you probably don't is that on the certificate of service, the email D. Herman at City appears on the city's website as exactly that, D. Herman, when in fact it is not. It is D. S. Herman. You may want to check your website at the uh, city. So okay. it would be D. Sherman. That was corrected on the May 28th certificate of service by what actually appears from the prior emails that I've seen directed to your attention. So the 25th, I got that. That was your rule. That's where I might have missed this one. The one on May 28th as well? Well, I did not get the one on the 19th. Uh, but the one on May 28th, I must, I must have missed it. Did you have any discussions with any other council persons that indicated they had received my requests? I did not. If you take a look at the certificate of service for the document dated May 28th regarding the particular emails of the council persons that are listed there, are those true and correct to the best of your knowledge? To the best of my knowledge, these are correct. And is it your recollection that you don't recall receiving this or that you might I, have received it and you don't recall it now? I. Tell you the truth, I might have missed it. I don't recall seeing it. Do you know of any reason why any of the other council members would not want to forward me information that I requested in form of the other? I can't speak for other council members. Okay. Again, we've discussed Exhibit 14 as a matter of testimony. We've discussed Exhibit 15 as a matter of testimony. Exhibit 16 is an affidavit of Becky and Tyson, which, along with all the rest of my exhibits, I'm moving into the, uh, to be accepted into the record. Um, I will recite paragraph number seven. Specifically, Mr. Greg Smith is not a resident at 1690 Clarkville Road, Waterford, Ohio, 45786. Mr. Greg Smith was not a resident at 608 Elm Street in Belpre, Ohio, 45714. Mr. Sherman, did you ever make contact with um, Beth Ann Tyson to determine whether or not she had any relationship with Mr. Smith? I did not contact Ms. Ms. Tyson. Have you contacted anybody who has told you that he had a relationship with her? Just what I've been told. So who has told you? Or what I see here. So you said her testimony is in 16? Exhibit 16, yes, sir. Do you know Christina L. Hyde personally? Have you spoken to anyone personally that has told you that Mr. Smith has a relationship with Ms. Tyson and that he is living at their residence, at her residence. Uh, just the witness that 
was here that testified that she was introduced as his girlfriend. And that witness is a witness that appeared. That was the witness that appeared here. And, you know, so I just want to state from the record that I find it very odd that Mr. Smith had to be texting at the same time that he received a, a text and answered his phone, paused for several minutes, read it, and then. So, Mr. On the speculation. I'm, good, I'm going to move to strike that answer as being unresponsive and pure speculation. Just hold the speculation. <clears throat> Other than Mr. Clinton Stanley, who you said testified mm -hmm. previously, mm -hmm. uh, his testimony was not under oath, was it? No, he was subpoenaed in. I understand he was subpoenaed in. He testified to that. But that was at that hearing, correct? Correct. Okay. And why wasn't Mr. Stanley subpoenaed tonight? Mm, maybe because he was probably already threatened. Say again? Maybe he was already threatened. So, okay. again, I'm going to object to that as totally irrelevant, immaterial. Well, you're asking me to speculate why he's not here. Sustained. I asked you why he wasn't here, not to speculate. Okay. Good. Do you have any? Do you have any information from any witnesses that have come forward and provided you specific information for this hearing that Mr. Greg Smith has engaged in any threatening or intimidating behavior? Councilor, I've answered your questions multiple times. Answer the question, sir. I can't speculate on anything that Mr. Smith does outside of. I'm not asking you to speculate. Really? That was a very specific question. Would you like me to rephrase it? Yeah, you rephrase it. Do you have any information that you brought here this evening for either admission to the record or proffer to the record from any individuals that Mr. Smith has engaged in specific intimidating or retaliatory behavior? Since his last hearing on February 19th, 2021. Not here, no. Excuse me, Mr. President. I'm not quite through yet. Just looking for a couple more documents. aware of a statement that was made in the Athens Messenger regarding Mr. Smith engaging in a reign of terror? Uh, I'm sure you've got the article. Do you, re do you recall it? I don't recall, no. But I'm sure you've got the article. What, so. what does this question have to do with residency? I'll skip over one question. Is there anyone that you believe as a result of direct evidence that you have who has not appeared here tonight to give testimony adverse to Mr. Smith as to his residency because he has in either intimidated or coerced them since February 19, 2021? Objection. I can't make a definitive statement on that question. Can't do it. Well. Sustained. It's from his personal knowledge. Does he have any knowledge? 
How do I know? Okay. When uh, people make complaints about council persons, are uh, those complaints forwarded to council? Question of residency again. That what are we doing with residency? We're well. We're we trying to establish whether he lives here or not. That's the question. Well, um, we're not talking about complaints about council. Well, here's what I don't know. I don't know whether or not anybody may have contacted him after at least we had one publication to indicate that they may have testimony that's favorable to Mr. Smith that hasn't been communicated. Okay. You want to try to repeat that again? Sure. I understand the question. Has anybody contacted you regarding Mr. Smith's residency uh, in a manner where that information would be favorable to him? No, no one's contacted me. No. Okay. And the notice that the public had for this meeting tonight to provide evidence was published at 6.30 for correction, 606 last night, was it not? I believe I'd have to look at the publication. So 24 hours before the special meeting was called. I can't say the exact time without looking at emails. Five fifty seven. So that's when the notice to the public went out that the meeting that we're having tonight was going to be held was 557 yesterday. Mm -hmm. My last exhibit, Exhibit 17. This is the print in the packet, Exhibit 17, which is my revised code 350302 and 24. Offer those into evidence as to the authority for uh, the Board of Elections and state law. I also move in the into the record um, exhibits 18, which would be the envelope and information that we have. Code is wrong on the exhibit. I don't think it's a one of those two. Okay. Booty for the left. Booty for the board of letters. Okay. And I'd also like to. Um, Madam Council, uh, Clerk Council, what exhibits do you have in front of you that have been handmarked tonight? I have um, 18, the envelopes, and 19, the request for public hearing. May I approach? Yes.
that would be exhibit 20. Okay. By the way, just although this is part of the record, but the, this new authenticated Ohio Legislative Service, it's really not as good as the old law right it was because it doesn't give you the history of legislation at the bottom. It won't print it. Uh, okay. I have not, I haven't tried the Legislative Service site yet. It's, so. It sucks. I, I move those matters into evidence. I would also move for a dismissal on the basis that the charging party has failed to provide reliable, probative, and substantial evidence that Mr. Smith resides anywhere else except at 238 Adams Street here in Nelsonville. I also move to dismiss on the basis that the failure to publish the notice in a newspaper of general circulation at least one week in advance of hearing for Mr. Smith is jurisdictional and he is entitled to that. I'll challenge that. Our attorneys were never, they were never provided that information and our special counsel had been already, they've already, uh, voted on and should have already been uh, appointed at that point at which you sent that, uh, you say that uh, email was sent. Well then if you're going to challenge that, sir, then let me rebut that. Motion's denied. We already had a challenge. I'm entitled to a rebuttal. He's, he yeah. chimed in. He's not a witness, but he chimed in. I'm You've had plenty of time to I'm rebut entitled, anything. I'm entitled to my I rebuttal. The, we are, uh, you got five minutes. Did you vote on resolution 2243 on or about May 22nd to appoint the firm? I voted on a resolution to appoint special counsel, yes. Okay. When you voted, did you vote to suspend the rules? I recall we had a discussion whether or not we had to suspend the rules. I don't recall whether we did or not that specific meeting. Okay. May I approach? Yeah. You have Exhibit 1 in front of you. This is be marked Exhibit 1A. And I'll ask you if that refreshes your recollection as to the vote that occurred on May 24th. And that appears to be, I assume our minutes are correct, so yeah. Okay, so in fact, from refreshing your recollection from Exhibit 1A, allow me if I might. I'll shed light on that. Um, we had a discussion. Resolutions don't require suspension of the rules. Ordinances do. Um, if you read that section in the charter, it specifically um, highlights so section 4, 410. It talks about enactment of ordinances. Um, and it talks about ordinances needing that, but not resolutions. Okay. And historically, City Council and Nelsonville, when we pass resolutions, they are done on one vote one reading. Um, they are not introduced and read multiple times. We conferred um, actually with uh, council on that and that's how we proceeded. Okay, when did you confer with council? 
on if we if it was because we were doing a resolution and when we talked when? about whether we, we that evening if we needed to suspend um or not or, or and we said no it was a resolution so we didn't okay. mr dunphy since we have testimony here coming in from a witness unsolicited would you please put this witness under oath so i can further cross her regarding this document no Objection. Absolutely not. This is exceeding the, the bounds of the special notice meeting. Then, then I move. I move to strike her testimony in its entirety. Okay. okay. It's fine. So strike it. Strike and, it. Struck. Go on. Move to exhibit one A and put it right there. Okay. All right. We are done here. Everything is in. Um, the record is closed. Leave the the record open. I, I would just request that you guys me, have Mr. it. Mr. Are, are I'm you, speaking to him. Are I'm you, speaking to him. Are you denying me other other witnesses yes, that I may call? Right? No. What witnesses do would you like to call? The, what the witnesses? witnesses? The other witnesses that I had put in my request for subpoena and request for continuance. Objection. This has been going on for an hour and 45 minutes. You had ample time to examine those witnesses, but you spent the past hour 45 only questioning Mr. Sherman when the other witnesses identified in your subpoena are already here in your presence. I, I when Sustained. I'm finished with him, then I move on to another witness. Well, I we're not going to objection. We're not sitting here for eight hours on this question of residency when your questions continue to ignore the sole purpose of the of this meeting. Sustained. I I I've sat here and I've let you ask those questions for an hour forty five. Counselor, don't, let, don't, lecture, don't lecture me. Don't lecture me. Don't lecture me and tell me how to practice law. I apologize. Okay, I, I will, I will take conduct, it that way, then I apologize. I will Order. conduct my examinations as the, as counsel permits. I've asked for other witnesses. Counsel has denied me the ability to call other witnesses. We're not correct denying you the that? ability to call other witnesses. They've been here for the past hour 45, of which time you've only decided to call one. Okay, I'd like to call Carla Grant. Objection. Abstained. I'd like to call Dan. Objection. Uh, Abstained. Or, uh, Sustained. Sustained. We're done. We're done. Okay, so you're not allowing me to call any other witnesses. Objection. That's a characterization. You've had the opportunity to call other witnesses for the past hour, 45 minutes. He indicated that the record would be closed. I indicated I would like it to stay open so that we can have a discussion on the merits of the vote. And that's what we're going to do is the way that I understand it proceeds. Yes, okay. you, you, do, you do understand that I can only talk to one witness at a time when they're on the stand and that when I'm finished with that witness, then I call another witness. And you also understand you can cease the questioning directed towards one witness if you wish to speak to others who are also present, right? Not when the witness does not, not when, the, wit not, not when this, the, the witness I'm still questioning that I still have questions for. I don't bounce back and forth. So how did witnesses. you start questioning him? Because he interjected because he interjected himself into the testimony. I didn't So you so you responded to his interjection then. So that means you could you could speak to him freely, is what you're saying. No. But you chose no, not to I, because I, you could call I did him not as a witness. I did not respond to him until he interjected himself as a witness in place of my questioning Mr. Sherman. If he hadn't have spoken, I would have continued on questioning Mr. Sherman. And then when I was through with Mr. Sherman, I would have talked to other witnesses. You don't you don't get to just shut out whatever you want when you already have a witness who's under okay. oath and testifying. I'm not shutting out whatever I want. No, no, I'm you talking about I'm not talking about I'm talking about Mr. Taylor. True. I'm talking about Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor Order opened up. Order. Now we are open to discussion of the evidence between us. Does anyone have any discussion on the evidence? I feel that the evidence has proven what it needed to prove. Okay. I agree. Um, may we call the question? Or? Yes, council discussion now. Yes. So I move that we uh, call the question about uh, removing. Mr. Smith from council due to his lack of continuous residency in the city of Nelsonville. I'll second that. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunby? Yes. 
Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. 